Hey, welcome to Gateway Online. My name is Luke, and we're so glad you're here with us today. If it's your first time joining us, go ahead and fill out our digital connection card and get connected to what's happening here at Gateway. Here at Gateway, we exist to love God, love others, and make disciples. If you or someone you know needs prayer, let us know. We would love to be praying for you. You'll be able to access our digital connection card at gatewaycc.org forward slash card, or click the link in our chat below. Pastor Randy is continuing the series of faith that works when life doesn't. But before we get into today's message, let's start off with some worship. I got it. 
upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Lord, bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord, turn
I count on one thing and the same God that never fails you'll not fail me now you won't fail me tuned in, my name's Luke, and we're so glad you're joining us for Gateway Online. The message is going to begin shortly, but before we do, I want to encourage you to grab that link and share it with a friend. Today, Pastor Randy is continuing the series of Faith That Works When Life Doesn't. If you'd like to take notes or want the devotions that will go with today's message, you can find them at gatewaycc.org forward slash notes. We're so excited to be, able to, to be able to bring you Gateway Online. A great way to partner with us in ministry is by giving online. You can do so at gatewaycc.org forward slash give. And don't forget, we have our little kid service after the message on Facebook at 10 a.m. Now let's check out Pastor Randy's message. Welcome, everyone. It's Thanksgiving weekend, and I sure hope you were able to spend some time safely with some of your family. This has been a year unlike any other year we've ever had. Uh, here's a quick question. How many of you are ready to go back to normal? Wouldn't that be a great blessing? You know, I, I want to th- spend a, send a special thank you, a shout out to all the people who are members of Gateway Christian Church. Listen, even though we haven't been able to meet together, wow, our people have been faithful to reach out to help one another and to pray for one another. And uh, the finances of the church are really healthy. Our attendance is 
is pretty weak right now because we can't even get together. But you know what? We're one in the spirit. So, boy, I'm so looking forward to getting through this virus and the shutdowns and all the things we're going through. And we're going to be able to come back together, the Lord willing, soon and fellowship together. One more little shout out. Thank you, Rick Warren, for a lot of these insights and stuff uh, that I've gleaned as I've gone through the book of James. And as we're going through the book of James, one of the major themes of this book is self-deception. And one of the ways that you and I deceive ourselves is we tend to lie to ourselves. Have you ever done that? You know, we try to convince ourselves with our mind what we know in our heart is really wrong. And James hammers this theme of our words and how our words are connected to our thoughts and our actions and stuff in our heart. Uh, he hammers this over and over again. And listen, we need to pay attention because we're never really going to be what God wants us to be until we're honest with ourselves. So one of the great ways that you and I deceive ourselves is through the way that we talk. Um, you know, we, we think that we're spiritual if we're not self-centered, but you know what? A lot of the things that we talk about tend to be that way. In James one twenty six, it says, if you claim to be religious, but you don't control your tongue, you're only fooling yourself and your religion is, check this out, worthless. Oh my gosh. It doesn't even say weak. It says it's worthless. Man, man, that's pretty, that's pretty brutal, right? So, I mean, we honestly, we could stop right there. We could just go home or I guess you are already at home. But I mean, there's some more I want to share. So let's keep going. James chapter three, verse one says, dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church for we who teach will be judged more severely, more strictly. Whoa, that's scary for me, folks. I, I got to admit, I mean, I, I'm guilty. I'm not perfect. I mess up all the time. I mean, that's bad enough. But then it says that I am going to be judged more strictly. Verse two. Indeed, James says, we all make many mistakes. Now, how's that for truth? I mean, the Bible is so authentic. It's so true. And he goes on to say, if we can, if for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every way. Wow. Let's go deeper. Now, now he starts giving us an, an illustration on, on the dynamic of the tongue and how it really kind of directs and controls our lives. Verse three, we can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a very small bit in its mouth. We used to raise horses. I know what that's like. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a very small thing that makes grand speeches, but a, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. Whoa, we're talking some serious heat there, right? Some serious damage. Verse 7, people can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. Remember that. You need help and I need help. We can't do this alone. We all need God's help. You will not succeed by willpower or by your own efforts alone. James says, it is ruthless, it is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Verse 13, if you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and even demonic. What a passage. Man, there's a lot in there to unpack. Let's get into it. Uh, honestly, I mean, no wonder... We need a faith that filter, filters what I say. So let's look at why we need to kind of get into this. Why do we need God's help? It should be self-evident, honestly, why we need God's help filtering what we say. <clears throat> can you remember the old statement, uh, the old saying as a kid? I remember this. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Folks, that's a lie. 
That's not a statement of truth. Words hurt. Some of the worst wounds you can get are from words of, of, of kind of anger or bitterness that come from people you love. I mean, it really goes down in deep. Words can be deadly. So here's why we need God's help filtering what we say. Number one, my tongue directs where I'm headed. He says this in verse three and four. We can make a large horse horse go wherever we want by means of a very small bit in its mouth, and a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. See, our words have tremendous influence over our lives. Just like a bridle on a horse's mouth. Now listen, no human being is stronger than a horse, and yet a, even a little child can lead a horse if it knows what it's doing by the bit in its mouth. Or, a, you know, a rudder on a ship is really one of the smallest parts on the, on the bottom of a ship. And yet, man, it steers that thing wherever, you know, the pilot says to go. Our words are like a bridle in our life, our, like the steering wheel of our life. So you take, a, you take someone who says, you know, I can't do it. And you have another person looking at the same situation going, well, I think I can. And a lot of times the difference is, they're both right, but the difference is one believes and has some confidence to go out there and attempt, and the other just won't even try because they think they can't. They could both be right. You know, the confidence in the heart that comes out of the mouth, it, it really makes a difference. So listen, if you don't like the direction that you're headed in right now, you need to change the way you talk about yourself. Change that, right? The tongue, the words that you're saying, really direct your life. Now, if you got nothing good to say, remember this, my grandma, my mom used to say this. If you got nothing good to say, don't even say it. Maybe not even say it about yourself would really help you. Sometimes I found out it's best not to say anything. It reminds me of the story of the guy who joined a monastery. He wanted to become a monk. Well, this happened to be a really strict monastery. And for the first three years, they had vows of silence to see if somebody was really serious and qualified. So at the end of the first year, they, they let someone say two words. Well, the guy joins up. He's silent for a whole year, goes about, does his duty. At the end of the first year, they say, well, okay, well, what, what would you like to share? And he had, his two words were, bed hard. Doesn't say another thing. So he goes through the whole next year, and at the end of the second year, he's allowed to say his two words, and he says, food cold. Well, he goes back in there. He's dedicated for another, you know, another year. At the, th at the end of the third year, he comes into the head monk and he says, I quit. Head monk looks at him and just shakes his head. Well, he says, well, no wonder. I'm not surprised. All you've done since you've been here is complain. You know, sometimes saying nothing might just get you a better place. So, all right. Number two, my tongue can destroy what I have. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing and it makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. Well, picture in your mind a forest fire just being set, just a little match can just spark. Listen, we know too much about that here in Sonoma County. And it says the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire for it is set on fire by hell itself. Man, Listen, you and I need to learn to guard against being a verbal arsonist. Our words can destroy so quickly. You know, it takes years and years, decades, centuries maybe, for forests to really grow and mature, and yet a fire can destroy them in a matter of hours. And how many people have destroyed a relationship, a marriage that has been building over years and, and then really invested in, and words can just wound so quickly and so deep. A relationship, a marriage can be destroyed. A church, a career. Man, th there's people that, that I've just read recently in the last few weeks who've lost their ministries during this COVID time, fallen into immorality. Words can go sin. Man, it is destructive. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. You got to live with the consequences of everything you say. You know, my words not only determine the direction of where I'm going, but they can destroy what, our ha what I have. They're so important. They're so powerful. And it says the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, Corrupting your entire body. 
It can set your whole life on fire. It's set on fire by hell itself. Which member of your body, what part of your body gets you into more trouble? For most of us, it's this thing right here. It's our tongue. So if you want to stay out of trouble, Proverbs 21 says, if you want to stay out of trouble, be careful what you say. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, fish. Listen, I've gone into the animal kingdom, you know, at Disneyland or in circuses and the zoos. And you can see lions and tigers and birds, reptiles. There's a lot of things and they can train to do some stuff. Man, you know, killer whales and, and porpoises. There's all kinds of critters that can do all kinds of stuff in movies. But listen, the Bible says in verse eight, no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Humanly speaking, the tongue is uncontrollable. You're not going to be able to tame it on your own. God is saying, without my help, it is hopeless. You will never control your own tongue by your own willpower alone. One of the things that you uh, may have spent some time doing during this COVID time is maybe getting on social media. Have you ever noticed that social media can be a very toxic experience? People sometimes will write things or text things in social media that they would never say out loud. Of course, there are also plenty of people who are saying some pretty bad things out loud. Some people are like they have flamethrowers in their mouth. Words can be deadly. Number three. My tongue displays who I really am. Your tongue really displays your character. It reveals your true identity. It, it really shows your real heart, not the facade, not the mask. Jesus said this, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of your heart. That's, that's so, sometimes, I mean, I've, I've, this has happened to me. Maybe this has happened to you. You say something and you go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I said that, you know? And it's like, the, the words kind of just didn't even go through your brain. It's like, you can't believe how dumb what you just said or how hurtful and you didn't really mean it. And yet it came out what's happening. Sometimes the words, they don't go up through your head. They kind of just come out of your heart and the raw emotion just kind of spills out of there. Jesus said out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. So man, Really, your mouth, the words that come out of your mouth, it's really an indicator of how spiritually sick or how spiritually healthy that you are. Have you ever gone to the doctor's office and, you know, one of the things that doctors like to do when you're sitting down, they're checking you out, they like to take that tongue depressor, you know, that thing, uh, 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 just thinking about a tongue de 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 depressor kind of makes me want to gag, right? I can't hardly even say it. But the doctor looks into your mouth and kind of, puts your scene in the back of your throat and he gets a real good picture and a feel for what's going on in your body by how healthy or not that your mouth is. James chapter three says in verse nine, sometimes our tongue, sometimes it praises our, our Lord and father. And sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Now, listen, you know, and I know we shouldn't be using bad language as followers of Jesus. Don't kid yourself. Don't excuse it. It is not glorifying to God. I've been guilty. Man, in football, I learned how to say all kind of bad stuff. I mean, my dad kind of had a bit of an influence on that with me as well. When you get trained as a kid, and as a young person to say certain things and to express certain things a certain way and you get around your friends and it becomes a habit. And so the way that we speak, you have to retrain yourself. And, and really, James is going to give us some clues on how we can really have more success in doing that. This praise and this cursing, you know, it can just happen within an instant. And uh, listen, Let's just think about this for a second. You know, with all the politics that we've all just gone through, you know, in our church, we've got people from that voted, you know, against and canceled, you know, canceled each other's votes out. So when you've got in your family or in your church or in your neighborhoods, I got some neighbors that voted one way, some neighbors voted another. So here's a question. How do you talk about people that you disagree with? 
that you disagree with politically? Do you treat them as human beings or are they the scum of the earth? Are you polite? Do you treat them with dignity? Do you treat them with respect? The Bible says we need to speak the truth in love as believers and I hope and pray as Americans. Listen, we need to resurrect an old fashioned value. We need to learn to disagree agreeably. Amen. James chapter three, verse 11. Does, does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig, does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? Nope. You can't draw fresh water out of a salty spring. What's he saying here? He's saying, make sure that the source is pure and not polluted. And he's really talking about our heart, okay? Back to what Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, okay? So you're never going to get it right here until you get it right here because they are connected. You need to first get it right here. And that's what James gets to in the very next verses. If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, yeah, yeah, I have a right. Ooh, this is mine, right? And we start defending and we have the selfishness in us, right? I have a right to win. See, well, then it says, don't Cover up the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Okay, let me let me get a little personal here. Because I mean I, I'm I'm preaching to you. I hope I'm practicing what I preach. So let me just be honest. You know, I have a beautiful, godly wife. She's probably listening at home, getting embarrassed right now. And, you know, I got to I got to be honest. She's a godly, spiritual wife. She prays. She loves God. She loves people. Um, I'm very blessed that the Lord put us together. And I got to tell you, you know, I love my wife. I love my my wife way more than I love you. And let me just be honest. I love you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming to Gateway. Thank you for being a disciple. I love you. I'm giving my life to you. I'm I'm a uh, thank you for allowing me to be your pastor, okay? I want to walk the streets of gold with all of you for all of eternity. But I love my wife Carrie more. Okay? That's the truth. Okay, so having said that, I'm going to be honest. How is it that I could say things at times that wound my wife? Sometimes I say them on purpose. What is wrong with me? Here I am using words to hurt the person I love more than anybody else on the planet. What is wrong with me? Can you believe that? What causes that? Exactly what James is talking about in these verses. People, the Bible is God's word. It has insights that can set you free. Look at this. James is saying, if I'm hurt down here in my heart, if I'm toxic in my heart, see, whatever is in the well of my heart, that's what I'm going to give to the people closest to me. That's what I'm going to give to my wife or my dog or my neighbor or the people I work with. Whatever is in your heart, it's what's going to come out. See, my deeper problem is really not my tongue or the words. It's my heart. So what's the solution? What do we do about that? Well, listen, every day, let's go to God. Let's connect to God. And so, number one, let's ask the Holy Spirit to change our heart. Ezekiel chapter 18 says, rid yourselves of all of the offenses that you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. You know what? We could start with confession. How about that? Father, here it is. You know, if you do say something wrong, something hurtful, maybe use a, you know, a cuss word or something, admit that to God. Just confess that. Don't, don't cover it up. Don't deny it. Don't, don't deflect. 
Confess, okay? So start with confession. <clears throat> out of the overflow of the heart, so if, if I say something bad out here, or I got something going on in here, really, think about this, think about this. My tongue really displays who I am. The truth is, you know, what's ever in here comes out. So here, for, as an example, somebody who has a harsh tongue is really revealing an angry heart. Somebody with a negative tongue is revealing a fearful heart. Somebody with an unfriendly tongue, they're revealing a hard heart. Somebody who has a critical tongue, they're always just they're critical about everything. They probably have a, a bitter heart. Somebody who has a boasting tongue, man, they're always bragging. They have an insecure heart. People with insecurities tend to be the ones that, that, that boast more, okay? Somebody who has a filthy tongue is revealing an impure heart. Somebody with a judgmental tongue is revealing a guilty heart. Somebody who's over, who's got an overacted tongue, they just can't stop talking. They're revealing an unsettled heart. Are you with me? On the other hand, somebody who has an encouraging tongue, they probably have a happy heart. Somebody who has a gentle tongue, they probably have a loving heart. Somebody with a controlled tongue, well, they've got a peaceful heart. See, whatever's in your heart is going to come out. Oh, Lord, give us good, healthy hearts, right? And let me just say this. It doesn't really help if you go have a, a well that's full of poisoned water. It doesn't help to paint the pump. Painting the outside of the pump isn't going to change anything. You've got to go clean out the source. Whatever's in the well is what's going to come out. So any out that, out, you know, outward things that we try to clean up isn't really going to make a difference until we go into the heart and purify that. But I got good news. God specializes in heart transplants. He specializes in it. Second Corinthians 5.17 says, This means that anybody who comes to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has become. David, after he had committed adultery and then murder, in Psalm 51, he repented. And he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God. See, that's what we need to do. God can give you a clean heart. He can give you a new heart. He can give you a heart transplant. So that's the first thing you need to do is ask the Holy Spirit to give you a heart transplant. Number two, ask the Holy Spirit to help you manage your mouth. Psalm 141 says, Lord, help me control my tongue and help me be careful about what I say. See, the best proof of being spirit-filled is not your ability to speak in some unknown tongue or pray in an unknown tongue or sing in an unknown tongue. That's all good stuff, right? But the real proof of the pudding is that you can control the tongue you do understand and that you can speak under the leading and the filling of the Holy Spirit words of life and not hurtful words of death. God wants us to learn to speak like that. So what does your heart reveal about you as you speak? What is your words, how are your words reflecting what's in your heart? What does your tongue say about you? You know, if we were to back up and kind of play a tape of what some of the things that you said this week, what direction is your life headed right now, right? What are you talking about the most? The only way we can really manage what we say is to let Jesus Christ have the steering wheel of your heart. Give him the bridle of your heart so that he can purify your heart and steer your words the right way. If we have a spirit-filled heart, we can have a spirit-filled speech. And I would just like to invite you Let's ask Jesus. Let's, let's go to him and say, Lord, we need your help. We can't do it on our own. The tongue controls who you really are. It drives you. It leads you. It guides you. That's what we want the Holy Spirit to do. So let's ask the Holy Spirit to help lead us the right way. Would you pray with me? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, thank you. Thank you today that we can come and we can pray. And Lord... This is a very practical message. And Lord, we need some practical ways to have a governor on our mouth. We need practical ways for the Holy Spirit to help us say words that are helpful 
and healing instead of hurtful. And so, Father, we ask for you to help us. Lord, we understand, we know that we will not be able to control our words by our willpower alone. We need your help. So just pray this with me. Pray, pray it out loud. Say, dear Jesus, just pray that with me. Lord, take 100% of my wife, of my life. Take my heart, take my mouth. <clears throat> God, if we need a new heart, we need a new mouth. Help us, help us get a heart transplant this morning. Lord Jesus, sit on the throne of our heart. Take the steering wheel of our heart. Take the bridle of our heart so that you can steer our words the right way. Lord, we're asking you to cleanse our heart, forgive us of our sins. And Father, may we, as much as we can right now and understand, may we give you 100% of our lives so that we could live a life that's pleasing to you and so that with a clean heart, a new heart, our words will be words of life and health and help to those people around us that we love. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. As we get ready to celebrate communion today, let me just thank Pastor Randy for those words of encouragement. If you're uh, sticking with us, but you have never really given your life to Jesus Christ, uh, you know, now would be a perfect time to do it. Let me encourage you, the reason we celebrate communion every week is because only the sacrifice of Christ will cover up all of our sins. We have to believe in Him to be made right with God. And so we come together every week, we celebrate communion. Uh, you know, in the Old Testament, it, God was very clear. He did not delight in the killing of animals. He did not delight in sacrifices, but he delights in those who love him and worship him. And so take a moment, thank God for who he is. Um, thank him for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, which forgives you of all of your sins. And thank you, thank the Holy Spirit to empower you to live a life that would be worthy of God. We'll partake of the elements in just a moment. When Jesus celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples, he took the bread and he broke, blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them. He said, now take and eat. This now represents my body, which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the meal, he took the cup and he blessed it and says, now this represents my blood, the blood of the new covenant, the new agreement between God and us, and our righteousness is based on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of Jesus Christ. I hope you guys will stay encouraging this week. You'll learn how to encourage others. And the best way to do that is stay close to God so that you, you will be encouraged yourself, so you'll have the power to encourage others. God bless you. Have a great week. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name.
We're so glad you joined us. If you accepted Jesus today, we would love to know about it. Go ahead and fill out our digital connection card at gatewaycc.org forward slash card. And one of our pastors will encourage you and get you a Bible. I just wanna say thank you so much for partnering with us at Gateway. Your generosity is able to make a huge impact in our community. If you want to learn more about partnering with us through giving, you can do so at gatewaycc.org forward slash give. See you next week.